So we are back to working on the foreground, but this time on the green area. Now I'm just going to grab that flat brush that we've been using. And I'm just going to change that angle so that it follows the form. Just going to adjust the colors and I'm going to start this by flattening the ground with simple brush strokes. But to do the grass, pay attention to the vertical brush strokes. We don't want to be rendering every blaze of grass. We're just suggesting it because it's not an important part of the image. Now I am also thinking of adding a few more rocks on the ground, just scattering around the character. But make sure to control the randomness. In the previous part, I did mention 3D because I do occasionally use 3D to assist me, especially for architecture or some layout work. With some projects, because I know they will eventually ask for other angles, I will just start and set a very rough 3D model to paint over. I know a lot of artists and designers who refuse to use 3D, and that's totally okay. But for me, I actually improved my drawing with 3D. I learned a lot about camera, lighting, in 3D form. It's actually a really useful way of learning, so if you have access to 3D, I'll definitely recommend it. In fact, quite a few studios prefer designers with 3D knowledge. It really helps to be able to talk to the 3D modelers, animators, layout artists, or renderers. You don't have to be master at it, just some basic is enough to make a big difference. So you can see me working on the grass here. As mentioned before, I'm taking advantage of the vertical brush strokes. Make sure the ground isn't flat green. There's going to be spots of darker area, there's going to be spots of warm, there's going to be spots of green. Keep the variety going and don't forget the rhythm. This might sound a little weird, but I actually have gotten jobs just because I knew 3D, but then the job didn't require 3D. I mean, when I started working, I never had to deal with it at all. I think they just wanted to know if I was open to it, but yeah, anything can happen. These are all tools, and more tools you have, the more options you have. I haven't used 3D for a while now, but I do want to get back into it again because I definitely see an advantage. And there's so many programs now and it's only getting easier and easier to use. There's even free sculpting programs like Sculptures by Pixelogic. It's quick to download and very easy to use. It's basically a simplified version of ZBrush. So if you don't have the money, just download Sculptures and play around with it. It's definitely going to be useful. If you become good with it, you could add that to your pipeline. I know character designers and creature designers who use Sculptures and they quickly block out this form and shape of the character and they do the paint over in Photoshop and they do it really well and quickly. I'm just putting down options for you guys. Now there are two types of 3D, um, the two most common types, and they are polygon modeling and NURBS modeling. Now with polygon modeling, it's a bit like Photoshop where you have to deal with pixels. And with NURBS, it's a bit like Illustrator where it's calculated, it's mathematical. 
And just like in Photoshop and Illustrator, when you zoom into the polygon models, you will start to see the polygons. But when you zoom into the NERMS models, it's infinite. Because it's mathematically calculated, no matter how much you zoom in on it, it's always going to look clean. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Polygon is the one that the industry uses. NERMS is typically used for real life product designs. And that's why me having coming from industrial design, I learned NERMS modeling to begin with. I mean, I do use polygon models as well. But at the end of the day, everything has to be turned into polygon. So, so it's probably worth learning polygon. And if you feel like you want to learn NERMS, then go for it. It's definitely useful for hard surface modeling. Sculpting is also a really good way to learn 3D form. Whether it's a digital or physical sculpting, it taught me a lot about form. I became really conscious about the form I couldn't see. Like even if I was rendering the front view, I was thinking about the back view as well. And it really helped me to stabilize whatever I was drawing. It looked more real whether I was drawing something stylized or realistic. So if you do struggle with understanding 3D form, have a go at sculpting or 3D modeling. Now I've got rid of the other dark character I had originally. I think I'm just going to have this one single character standing on that rock. Now I'm just adding some rocks around the character and I'm grabbing the values from what I have on the canvas. Now think about where you want to place them. Don't just scatter it without any thought. Rocks are three dimensional objects. Please remember to add those shades. Just another quick advice. When you have time, try and do some research on concept art pipeline and process and see which part of the process you really want to be involved in. It helps to understand your goal. We are typically involved in the pre-production and production stage, but depending on the individual skills, you have an option to work in post-production stage as well. In post-production, they have jobs like texture painting, matte painting, environment dome asset creation, UI design, and etc. So explore what interest you. With the rocks on the ground, I wanted them to be slightly darker than the grass to separate the two elements. So keep checking the tone by desaturating the image with hue and saturation adjustment. The foreground is looking a bit too warm, so I will be adjusting the color later on to cool it down. Now the painting is almost done and we are going to finish this in the next part.